Good morning and again, dear church. Ready to be here the next couple hours or not? <laughs> mm, okay, <laughs> I will not waste your time. Uh, <clears throat> dear friends, once again we gather around the Word of God. Praise the Lord. And you know, I, I like one quote uh, by Abraham Lincoln. And I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. Amen. All the good of the Savior of the world is communicated to us through the, through the book, Amen. through the Bible. <clears throat> you know, I am overflowing with the joy from the fact that we have opportunity to turn the Bible, to study, to reflect, to, um, to think about these amazing words that God gave for us. One, two pastors. Uh, something happened. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, right now. <clears throat> One time, two pastors were talking about different questions that explain theologia, theological idea about unity uh, and the meaning of the church. Opening one of the verses from Epistles of Paul, one of them said, I don't understand this verse. The other one is saying, I can explain it to you. However, the first one answered, I can explain it to you as well. But to comprehend it is beyond my understanding. During our time in church, we have answers to questions. But sometimes it seems like it's more important to explain some questions, to know answer a question. And this is not a bad thing. Sabbath school is teaching us um, how to study, how to pose the questions, find answers and explanations. However, for our spiritual growth, for our spiritual health, we need to dive deeper. Stopping in time, alone, without TV in the background, just listening. Just read and meditate on the Word of God. Let God speak to you. Amen. Let God talk to you. Amen. And find this time to talk and listen to our Savior. Today, the soul. Today we are returning to the theme that gives us principles of servitude of unity. Principles that give a lens through which we look at each other, through, we, we, through which we uh, look on the problems that we need to solve at church and an approach that we want to propose, propose for the church growth. Um, we talked about foundations. Remember, we talked about foundations, church foundation, and uh, this is the cross of Jesus Christ. And we already talked about the two pillars. The first pillar, uh, the first pillar one, we, uh, we are new creation. We are new creation in Jesus Christ. And we live in a special time. Uh, we live in a special time that is already, but not yet. And the second pillar, it was our last Sabbath, we, uh, we talked about was yielding is our voluntary, voluntary decision. And today's sermon will be challenging, will be challenging our contemporary philosophy of individualism. It is philosophy that became part of our society that we live in today. Everyone wants to stand out. Human wants diversity and variety. Desire to individualism. But question for us, my friends, do we need this diversification at church? 
How unique can you be at church? Interesting questions, hard question for us. But we will not have an answer for these questions today. We will open up by a Paul's principle that becomes a challenge for, for a contemporary ego centeredness. Without further saying, let's go to our third pillar, our third pillar that our ethical roof stands on. As we as we talk, uh, as we were saying about uh, we already saying after Christ's resurrection, after Christ's resurrection begins the time of God's kingdom, new time, new era. And all of us are ambassadors of this kingdom on this earth. Remember, we talked about it. God through his spirit, God through his spirit established a fellowship where a person finds reconciliation and healing for this world. The fruit for God's love is the conception of fellowship. The conception of fellowship who praise God enjoying testimony, praying, and worship. The uh, theme of building the church the way it should be run, the explanation of spiritual meaning of the unification for Christ of Christians is very important topic for Apostle Paul. And we will, uh, we will look briefly, I, I believe it will be briefly, <laughs> two epistles uh, of Apostle Paul where, we, where he talks about church cooperation. Let's start with Galatians chapter 3 and we will read verse 28. Let's start with Galatians uh, chapter 3 and we will read verse 20, 28. <clears throat> there, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or and female. But you are all one in Jesus Christ. In this text, Paulus insists that the baptized people would become one in Jesus Christ. Very important idea, and we will talk about it. And there is no differences between them in ethnically, social status, or gender. Because in Jesus Christ, they are all children of God and they are all part of one family. And all of them are joined here. here. We are all equal, you know, in Jesus Christ. And Paul, Paul highlights many times that we are all one in Jesus Christ. At the, uh, at the time of Paul's, and Paul living, there was still slavery. However, in Christ, both slave and master become, became one. And yet each one of them continued to function in their um, frame of their social status. This was, you know, this was incredible, a rev revolutionary idea. Idea of social hierarchy. Our contemporaries understand equality. Equality a little bit different. A little bit different than Paul did. Equality today means taking something from wealth and, and give this for poor people. But in the very first fellowship, my friends, the wealthy Voluntary, voluntary give, uh, gave their wealth uh, to the needs of the congregation. Person became a Christian, but he was not left by himself. He, 
became a part of new community of fellowship with a new mentality of equality. This, I believe, this is very important. We became Christian, but we need to get this new mentality to understand what, what does it mean, equality in church. And that is why for Paul, an idea of equality could not be separated from the church. We must understand that for Paul, the unity of the church is the one of the most important goals in church. And equality serves, serves for this purpose. Equality serves for this purpose. For unity. Today, they take equality while stripping it or from biblical context and turn it into a lust. For, for an, il an illustration that unity for Paul was important, let's read passionate arguments between Paul and Peter in Antioch. And uh, we will open Galatians chapter 2 and we will read a couple verses just to remind us uh, reminding us uh, this, this story. Uh, we will start from verse 11. But when, when Kephas came to Antioch, I, what? Opposite him, to his face, because he stood condemned. For before certain man came from James, he was eating with, gen with Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself fearing the circum circumcision part. And, and you can continue to read um, uh, maybe more verses. But these, these arguments were raised because of his deep conviction that Jews and Gentiles must be one in Jesus Christ. And there should be no social barriers between, uh, that separate them. They should not have built two churches because they could not coexist. Jewish Christians continued to observe all the rituals, and this was not a problem. The problem was that for Jewish identification, observation of rituals was a requirement to be a part to be in a part of Israelites. Uh, one of the uh, the, uh, modern theolo theologian John Barclay said, the problem of the Jew to whom Paul addressed is not legalism, but cultural imperialism. The idea of national superiority separated Galatians among each other. Another American theologian, uh, John Howard Yoder, is talking about a, a meaning uh, of, uh, of the church. He, he said the uh, following, following words. The church, the church is, not a is not a just barrier of message of reconciliation. Even a newspaper or telephone can convey any sign. If we need to share just message or just set about our beliefs, we can use internet, we can use some PowerPoint presentation, we can use cell phone. We don't need church for that. And he continued, the church is not a result of message. Like a crowd in a movie, theater is a result of advertising. advertising. In the church, all of us, men and women, merge into, into one social structure. This is the handiwork of God, and this is the essence of the entire history of mankind. Interesting quote. For Paul, fellowship of God is not just gathering people together. It is an organism where people who accept Jesus Christ live together. Both unity and cooperation must be requirements for existence. In, this conclu in his conclusion, uh, in the conclusion of, uh, of Galatians, he is given his ethical serve and his ethical advice. 
in the chapter uh, uh, fifth, uh, fifth, uh, fifth chapter um, verses from 1921, Paul is given a list of deeds of the flesh. And can we open and read this, um, uh, these uh, fruits of flesh? Uh, Book of Galatians chapter 5, and we will start from verse uh, 19. I think you know these verses, and you read it before a couple, many, many times. Now the words of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality. Sexual immorality, I don't know, does not work again. Uh, <clears throat> impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, revilers, decisions, divisions. And he continued to, to, uh, to explain or maybe to, to, to give us these examples of fruit of flesh. But interesting for us, my friends, that part of the list are the sins that to go, to, to go against the unity of the church. This is not just a list of other sins. This is a list of sins that go through the unity, er, go against the unity of the church. And if we will continue to read, yeah, and again, maybe verse 20, uh, hatred, variance, strife, seditions, heresies, such behavior causes separation. If you pay attention to the context of these verses, and we will start to read from verse 13, you will see uh, that Paul is given very, very precise regulations against the conflicts at church. And he talks in this his dialogue and this this ethical advice uh, he gave just for, for Galatians to have to have unity. But these problems, these fruits of flesh, it just have 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 context when Paul talked about unity. He talks both about the fruits of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit in the context of unity. Following Christ must be seen in love towards each other and their cooperative service. If we will open verse 13 from chapter 5 and the last part of that verse we can read but to love, serve one another. And if you remember our uh, previous sermon, we talked about um, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2. Bear one another other burdens, and so fulfill the law of Jesus Christ. Now, we will go to 1 Corinthians. And caring for the unity of the church is a key theme of the epistles. Of this epistle, already in the chapter four, four uh, chapter uh, chapter one, um, verse ten. If you will open this verse, you will see in his greetings, Apostle Paul talks about his main calling over the church of Corinth. Can we open First Corinthians chapter one and verse ten? <clears throat> I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Just here, just starting to, to write his, his message for Corinth, he starts with main idea of this, of this uh, epistles. We know that in the history of the Corinth church, there were a lot of conflicts and were a lot of divisions. Even the epistles, he, he looks at these, at these divisions. However, Apostle Paul considers divisions and separations as an evidence of spiritual immature 
and is contradiction of the, to the gospel. And if you open, uh, if we will open chapter three, and we will read a couple of verse, verses, you will see, uh, like example of what we say just just before, chapter three. But I, brothers, could not address you as a spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. Infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for, for you are still of the flesh. For the while there is in jealous and strife among you, and you not of the jealous and behaving only in the human way. For when one say, says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, of, are you not being merely human? This is a question. This is not a question just for, for Koreans church. This is a question for us. Paul is saying, is there a conflict among you? Then you live like an unbeliever in this, of this world. Interesting that Apostle Paul is saying that instead of being mature, you are babies, uh, babies that are fed with milk. When he talks about food, he is meaning the word of God. And when we look at the experiences of studying the word of God, then the result of loving the word of God is what? Unity. Unity between brothers and sisters. This is the result of knowing the word of God. It is an explosive message, my friends. Conflicts and divisions are upsetting power because his task is not just saving the souls, but to build a fellowship as well. We might all read new Bibles uh, in all languages, Greek, Hebrew, uh, what, can, what can possible. We can read a lot of commentaries. But if we don't have unity among us, then there is no point. Continuing uh, continue our travel uh, throughout the Korean, uh, epistles of, uh, of Corinthians, we will jump to chapter 12. Please open with me chapter 12, uh, <clears throat> chapter 12, 13 and 14. It is in these chapters that Paul is talking, talking about the church as the body of Jesus Christ. And he talks about how church must function and cooperate. He dedicates the chapter, 12th chapter to the fruits of the Spirit. And I would like to read with you 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and we will read from verse 4. Please open and read with me. Now there are variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there is varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all, of, all, all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for common good. Brilliant, my friends. In chapter 12, Paul talks ab about diversity of the gifts, serves as a huge blessing in the church. He is using human body as an analogy. He, is, he highlights the idea that all body parts are needed in organism, uh, for organism to function. And if we will open uh, in, in the same chapter, just we will, we will find verse 26. If one member suffer, all suffers together. If one suffer, not just physically suffer, maybe spiritually suffer, suffer a whole body, suffer together. In one member is honored, all rejoice together. Without jealous, we will all rejoice together. And next verse 27, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of he highlights an idea that all, bar, all body parts are needed for an organism to function. And since body has a lot of organs to cooperate with each other, so should we 
cooperate in the life of our church. Now we will go. This is, you know, we, we talk about idea, we talk about some ideas of unity. And what is important for Apostle Paul, because he talks about e equality, but equality should serve for unity. Like diversity should serve for unity. And now again, this is like illustration for, for us. And can you open chapter 14 and we will read verse, from, we will start from verse, from first verse. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks, not to man, but to God. For one who no one understands him, but he utters mystery in the spirit. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their unbuilding and encouragement and consolation. The one who speaks in tongue builds up himself. But the one who prophesies builds up the church. Builds up the church. Now I want all to speak in tongue, tongues, but even more to prophesy. In that chapter, he talks about the gift of tongues that is needed in the church. And we understand that we need this, this special gift. However, in Corinth, this gift became a problem, an obstacle for unity. Paul says, it does not matter what gift you have, because all of these gifts must be used only for the unity and Edificate, edification of the church. Very often, very often, my friends, in chapter 14, Paul is using the word building and edify. Building and edify. All of our gifts and source must be subordinate to this idea. Paul encouraged people not to engage in spiritual competition. He calls to complete in manifestation of spiritual gifts. We don't have competition between each other. We don't need to have it. Because all other gifts to serve for what? For unity. For church needs. Pride leads to the, to the destruction of unity. If you agree, gifted from God, I believe that all of us gifted of God. Because Paul says that church doesn't have F, F. We don't have any needs in any talents and, and any, any gift because God gave for each of us special gift to serve in the church. If you're gifted from God or if you have a talent, it must serve as a unity in the church. Please think about that. Please think about this idea. Uh, one example, I remember uh, one example from my life. I grew up in church where the word two family, two family clans. Do you know what is it? <laughs> we don't have it. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. But where we concerns in the church, when, uh, when my family were newcomers to the church and we were not part of any clans, praise the Lord, and everything started from their, from, from their pride. Pride in their talents, in their effort and ministry. People try to do something, to be best in their ministry. The problem that uh, began when they started to classify their gifts into elite gifts and ordinary gifts. With time, the prideful appetite, appetite of two clans grew and they could not coexist with, with each other in the same time. Uh, and this led a huge conflict and opposition in the church. And as a result, in the result, my friends, everything came down to dividing Sabbath ministry, summon, Sabbath among them. So one Sabbath, the service was held, held by one clan and the other Sabbath was given to the other clan. So when one of the clans were, was in charge of Sabbath, 
the other did not show up at the church. And uh, vice versa. Not very pleasant, is it? Definitely it's not um, constructive. At this point, the atmosphere at church was, was stressful. Not pleasant. People who came to church at this time, a, a person who was trying, searching for God, was disappointed and never came back. We, lo we, lo we lost a lot of people. I, I told you honestly. This was in the, nine, in the 90s when Soviet Union disappeared and we got opportunity to listen about God. We had a lot of evangelistic series. People, just any usual evangelistic series with other main, like pastor, he can bring 30 people, maybe 10, but every, every quarter we baptize 10, 15 people in some, in some church like we have right now. But we lost. Because people did not find family and they leave church. And got these disappointments from church. It's hard to improve in the future. Arrogance and using church as a field of self-actualization is not a part of spiritual and church growth. Amen. That's right. God calls us to build a community. Fouch. Interesting is that between the chapters 12 in 1 Corinthians and chapter 14, we find the chapter that is dedicated for, for what? For love. Hymn of love. Remember? Chapter 13. Please read, not maybe right now, but read, read, read this, this, this chapter for, for your inspiration. In this context of church, unity, as Paul is putting this song of love. Love. Love must be understood in the context of the church. Amen. Love must curb super spiritual Christian whose behavior threatens the unity of the com community. Did you get it? I, I would like to read this again. Love must curb super spiritual Christian whose behavior threatens the unity of community. Love must bring the congregation, binds us with each other. And the fruit of the love is interpreted by Paul in the context of fellowship. Coming to our conclusion today, I am confident that Paul's message is a very strong antidote to the modern philosophy of humanism and individualism. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Be yourself. Be faithful yourself. To yourself. And faith, this is the favorite slogans for our modern society. It is the greatest commandment of the contemporary way of living. Individualism is a challenge for the church, my friends. Because the word of God calls to replace I with we. Amen. And then puts us under the authority of God. The religion of our time is, a, is to glorify man so that he can enjoy himself forever. Amen. This view influences, influences our church and our relationship with each other as a community of believers in Jesus Christ. And I would like to end my sermon today with an example how papyrus is made. Do, do you know what, what, what papyrus is? Yes, this is ancient paper. And an example that we will... Uh, I was in Egypt and uh, visited one of the... Um, like, like museum, papyrus museum, and they showed us um, how, how papyrus is made. And I remember, and this is, it was maybe 15 years ago, but anyway, I remember this process and effect that 
that uh, it was on me. An example that will, I believe that this example will help you to remember that unity in church means. I would like, my friends, please listen. I would like you to remember this example every time when you take a piece of paper into your hands. Please remember about this, this, um, this example. Okay, first step. First step, there is a plant called papyrus plant, yes? And it was cut down. First of all, you need to cut down. Second, he, the stacks was cleaned and you need to clean this stuff. And third, they, then they were made into thin stripes. You need to make a lot of thin stripes. Fourth, the, the, then these thin stripes were interwined. Inter inter and thieves, uh, like this way, yeah? One, another, and just a lot. It depends what, what kind of size of paper you would like to get. For, uh, fifth, they poured water over it. 80% water. And sixty, then it was pressed down, and seven step right in the sun. In the result, you got material, and you can, you can use this material. And dear friends, God is gathering us in unity and cleanses us from everything unnecessary. He intertwines, baptizes us in Holy Spirit and puts us under grass and binds us with his precious blood. Going to this path of formation, we become a material that God used to write his message for this contemporary world. Amen. Let's have a good, good God give us strength and wisdom, patience to build our church in the spirit of love. Amen? I would like to pray with you. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray in your precious name, your Almighty God, your sense of our life, meaning of our life. And today, we are thankful for your sacrifice, for your resurrection. You give us opportunity to be new creation. And today we pray, give us this new mentality. When we will understand that idea of equality, our gifts, our abilities, talents, must serve just for unity of the church, to build the church. Give us this wisdom and give us power to build the church to build fellowship here in shelter. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, today we finish talk about Africa Church. And I, you know, when, in the process when I, talk, when I prepare for my sermons, I get a lot of materials and you know, some ideas for some new series, <laughs> and maybe someday we will continue to talk about that. But today, I would like just to remind you, we have foundation. This is the Jesus, this is the cross of Jesus Christ, his, his sacrifice for us, his resurrection. Next, we talk about already, but not yet. We are new creatures, we are new creatures. At the second time, we talk about healing as a balloon. This is give, give. God gave us this example. How to give ourselves for another. And today we talk about new fellowship in Jesus Christ. This is our lens how we need to see our church and each other in church. And praise God for this time that we have together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a good rest of Sabbath. Thank you.